Today's episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. If you're trying to keep your information safe online, ExpressVPN is the best way to do that. Now let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghosts and Friend Dogs. Friend Dogs in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 I, some days it feels like that, I'll be real. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's going on? A whole bunch of nothing. This week has been pretty chill. Um, I realized that I had taken, I don't know, way too many brand deals this one <laughs> particular week. And so I spent all day planning everything around playing video games, which is a good, it's a good problem to have. Right. And um, thankfully, hilariously, both of the like two big games that I had this week, uh, Horizon, Burning Shore, and uh, Dead Island Two, both happen in LA, so I essentially got to play a video game that was my city and run around in it in both post-apocalyptic futures. And I'll be honest with you, hilarious! It was <laughs> so much fun. Best part about Dead Island Two is that you start in the Hollywood Hills and in Bel Air and stuff, and it is so accurate that. All the roads, you can't see inside the mansions. And I was trying to explain to chat, I know you think you're going to go up into the Hollywood Hills and see like a celebrity's mansion. Nah, it's all bushes and giant walls and you can't see anything. And it's the most boring experience ever. Every time someone comes to LA, they're like, let's go to Hollywood. Hollywood sucks. Let me just stress this again. Hollywood <laughs> sucks. And I'm so happy Dead Island 2 put that in. It's hilarious. Like everything about it sucks. It's so funny. So I'm very much enjoying it. <laughs> that is true. The only times I've ever been to Hollywood, it did suck. That's it. Oh, I thought there was a story there. <laughs> I was waiting like, and? No. Yeah? Uh, no, that was it. Uh, I remember seeing the Church of Scientology. That and the Mormon yeah. Church, which is about 20 times bigger. I just hate the Hollywood culture. Like, I don't even know if it has a culture. It's so culturally bankrupt. <laughs> like, it is just as the closer you get to Hollywood, the more billboards and signs you think you, you see for people that, I guess, want to be celebrities. It's very bizarre. Like, agents will rent out giant billboards for publicity for a new show or whatever, and 90% of them you have never heard of and you will never hear of again because it's literally <laughs> just for the people to be like, we're very popular. Right? It has yeah. nothing to do with what's good or bad. And then award season comes around and everything turns to awards like, for your consideration, house hunters. And you're like, cool, all right. <laughs> it's a lot of that. Yeah, Holly and other than that, like Hollywood, there's some cool venues and things if you're gonna go to a show, like that's cool. Mm. Everything else, what are you get what are you gonna do? Go to the wax museum or go dance <laughs> with a little too dirty Spider Man? Like, what are you gonna do up there? <laughs> Look at the hey. walk, the, the, the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. 90% of the stars are people you've never heard of. That's true. How do they even get stars? Honestly, originally I thought it was you had to earn it in some way, but I'm almost positive you pay for it. Oh, yeah, probably. Let me, let me look that up. How do you... <laughs> criteria for receiving a star consists of the following. Professional achievement, longevity in the category for five or more years, contributions to the community... Uh, and the guarantee the celebrity will attend the dedication ceremony. Gotcha, gotcha. So the contributions to the community are the money bit. I see. So you, essentially, you're kind of paying for it. Yeah, it says <laughs> right here, um, can anyone buy a star? And this one says a star cannot be bought. It is an honor and an achievement. Da -da 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 -da. However, and then it goes on to list all these things you have to do, <laughs> and one of them includes spending money. <laughs> but they can't be bought. Yeah. Right. Also, there's a fee of $55,000 payable at the time of selection. So they select you, and then you pay $55,000. <laughs> right, 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 right. Could you imagine just, like, 
getting selected for an award and they're like you're like oh my god this is awesome like yeah so uh if you want your award you gotta pass fifty five thousand dollars it's like when the guy gives you a cd i don't know if they do this anymore or a blu-ray or whatever of their music and they're like yo yeah i'll sign it for you and then they hand it to you and then they expect money and you're like i didn't want this to begin with, bro <laughs> yeah. and then they harass you <laughs> until you pay them they yep. do that stuff to tourists all the time here especially oh, yeah. near the chinese theater yeah, this one dude, when I was downtown at the Bean, tried to put, like, a bracelet on my hand. He's like, all right, you buy now. And I was like, no, I don't buy. <laughs> I was like, get out of it. It's like, walk away. I was like, no. Years ago, I don't remember where this was. This might have been New York. I went to go meet some friends downtown. While I was getting off the subway, there was a guy standing there with, like, I don't know. I'm not going to say a trench coat, but a very suspiciously long jacket. And as I approached him, he opened his jacket and was like, yo, I got rings. I got, I got necklaces. And I was like, no, I'm good. He's like, dude, I need to get rid of these. Like anything. I'll take any amount of money. And I'm like, no, no, I'm good. He's like, anything, dude, anything. I was like, <laughs> no, no. I, I, the fact that you, you want me to buy them that badly is worrisome. I'm just going to keep moving. He's like, dude, dude, three for one. I think it's got to work. It, I imagine some people are just like, oh, you know, I guess I'll just. I guess I'll buy it, you know, just to not make a hassle or, like, not create a scene or something. He was trying to get me to buy, and I'm going to do this with air quotes, air quotes, gold necklaces and gold rings for $16. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, what a steal. I'm all right. <laughs> this man has found you gold, literally, he's found you literal gold, something that has been, try, people have tried to get that for generations. And he's trying to give it to you for only like $16. Yeah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So, I mean, and then like, uh, I don't know, I played Horizon and that was fun. Uh, LA is like the year 3000 LA is wild. I will say LAX still there. I mapped out the highways, which was really sad. I was like, oh, well, this must be the 405. So that means the 10 is over there. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so what you're saying is you enjoy trying to find your surroundings in a video game. I, I mean, I like exploring in games and when I can explore a place that I already know and be like, oh my God. So a great example is when I was going through the Hollywood Hills in Bel Air and, and Dead Island 2, I was like, oh my God, I actually know this street. And even though it's a fake hotel, I know what hotel they're mimicking. And mm. that side road over there, oh my God, that's a side, that's kind of like a side road that sometimes I take to get to a friend's house, right? Like, yeah. So that kind of stuff was fascinating to me. And I uh, yeah, I love that. I love stumbling upon something and be like, oh my God, I recognize this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was pretty fun. I can see that. I could have gotten out and literally walked around the town and done the same thing, but instead <laughs> I sat on a stream <laughs> and played these two games all week. Well, to be you know, fair, one in, <laughs> one of them was paying you money to do it. The other was just you would go outside. True. Very true. However, yeah. I'm no longer being paid. I'm still playing both. Mm. So, you know, there you go. that's the thing. <laughs> uh, I played uh, Terra Nil. That game was really fun. Hell yeah. Yeah. I liked it a lot. It was very chill. It was my type of thing. Just like creating the environment and just hearing rain sounds. And I was like, yeah. Is it is good. a very Crendor game. Mm hmm. I love it. Yeah, I loved it too. Um, so I did that. And then, oh my God, I forgot. So I went. <laughs> All right, here's a story. Uh, I went to PetSmart or Petco, whatever. It was a pet place, one of them. And I was buying cat food. And so the guy there at the checkout thing was like, oh, you got a, you got a few cats? And I was like, nah, I just got one cat. I'm just like loading up and he was like, ah, oh, I got four cats. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And he's like, and six dogs. And I was <laughs> like, uh, oh, that's cool. And he's like, and a squirrel. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, the squirrel comes in and sleeps with me at night. He'll like wrap around my neck. And then the, the other animals are like sleeping all over the bed. And he's like, and then I got like two goats and uh, something else. I can't remember what he said. I was like, still like trying to process everything he was talking Wait, about. I'm so con. Does this guy like live in the countryside? I don't understand. I have no idea, but all I know is he's got four cats, six dogs, a squirrel, and like a couple random other animals. 
and he works at a pet store, so I guess it checks out. But yeah, he must <laughs> just love animals, I guess. I guess, but he was just like, yeah, my dogs have, like, they love the squirrel. Like, they've attacked other squirrels, but this squirrel, they know this is my squirrel, and they love him. I was like, oh, that's that's neat. They're one happy family. They're like, yeah. you know, a found family of weird, weird animals <laughs> hanging out together. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know, I guess he's like the druid and the hobbit or something. Uh, yeah. what, go through the animals again. How many does he have? Four cats, six dogs, a squirrel, and then there was like a couple random other, like a, a goat or like, I don't know, something like that. There's like a couple other things. And this was in a pet shop in your town? I'm trying to just piece together how this guy can live in your area and still have room for all of these animals. <laughs> I was literally checking out buying cat food. <laughs> I got my cat food. And I left. Um, <laughs> he seemed all right. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, speaking of random people out in public, so we got our we got our our standard like breakfast again. Hell yeah! And uh, we're eating, and I uh, there's these people like a couple tables down, and they were just like, it was this guy who was probably in his like late thirties, early forties. And this other guy who was probably like late forties, early fifties, and the the late thirty, early forty guy was just like, "Dude, I I hate the real estate market. Got to pay this jackass ten grand, and then I, I need my marketing team to do some other shit. By the time that happens, you gotta like buy the land, and that's like all I could hear. But he was like, I don't know if he's like building something. But it sounded like he was like overseeing a building." process or whatever but he was like he was going all out he was like blah 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 and then when we <laughs> left when we blah, left blah, blah. <laughs> when we left the restaurant like 20 minutes later he was still talking to the guy in the parking lot at their car so they were like but the the thing was this guy did all the talking the other person i think did like five percent of the talking so it, it was a very one-sided conversation but Maybe the other guy is just, you know, he just likes listening. Yeah, maybe dude was just complaining. Yeah. I think that's what it was. I think he was just complaining. Yeah. Yeah. I have a theory, and it's completely untested, but it's just like a gut feeling I have that I know is true for some reason. If it's a weekday, mm -hmm. and you see two people out to lunch or brunch or whatever, I promise you, one person there has showed up specifically to rant to the other person about something, to vent in some way, and the other person is there to listen, and that's the dynamic. That's just the way it is. I don't know why, and I know people are like, what about business? What about relationships? I, it all boils down to that. The, the, the like midday lunch on a weekday is always someone has a problem, and the other person sits there and listens. <laughs> Usually I'm the listener, so I get it. I enjoy listening. Because uh, the, the, there's the, another table right behind us I forgot about. They weren't like crazy, but it was just these like two older women and the classic like, we need to get together for brunch. And then they got together for brunch and she's like, oh, my God, Mary, I haven't seen you in forever. And then she's just like, I love the sandwiches. And she's like, <laughs> iced tea. Oh, my God. And she was I like, I love the sandwiches. <laughs> and she did think she's like, you are not paying for this meal. I am going to pay for it and you cannot stop me. She had the vibe of like. Like, she used to teach probably, like, aerobic fitness in the 80s. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you're you're giving me, like, a good vibe, and I kind of want to know more about her. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I kind of want to, like, she's single? What's going on there? I don't know. But she had that vibe of, like, used to teach aerobic fitness in the 80s. Definitely, like, you know, uh, just, like, high energy, kind of, you know, extroverted. But, like, you know, like a, a nice person. And she was just meeting up with Mary, who with Mary, think, <laughs> Mary looked like she she either was like an office, like a, a secretary and was burned out or was like a former teacher and was burned. out. Both of those seem entirely plausible and accurate. Yeah, it, it was very much that type of atmosphere going on there. But, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't pay. I wasn't like holding up my, you know, listening horn. 
or something like, oh, <laughs> I need to listen to this table. You What's know, going I kinda... on over there? <laughs> yeah. Ghost, pass me my listening horn. <laughs> I just kind of, you know, I just sit there, I observe. If someone's talking very loudly, I'm like, what are they talking about? Oh, my God, that just reminds me again. There's this other woman talking very loudly. And I, it was like she was, she was talking about dogs, but it was, like, it was like she was collecting trading cards. She was just like, no way, you got a golden? <laughs> when you say it like that, yeah, I absolutely can imagine yeah. what this was like. No she was way. Just like, no way. You got a golden? Like, I've got like two Germans at home, but like, you know, you got one. I was just like, what? <laughs> like, it literally sounded like they're like trading Yu Gi Oh cards over there, but it's like Golden Retriever and German Shepherd. If anyone ever <laughs> shouted, I've got two Germans at home, I would be like, what? So, yeah, I'd tune in too. <laughs> I'd be part. Yeah. I'd be like, I got to listen to this conversation. <laughs> Again. I mentioned this the other day. Some people are just like, you guys are a little too nosy. Like, listen, if someone's yelling out in public, I'm not going to be like, hmm, <laughs> I can't hear. I, I am trying to just sit at my, like, no, I'm going to listen. Just let it be known <laughs> that if you shout, I've got two Germans at home, I'm going <laughs> to tune in. I'm going to yeah. stop what I'm doing and I'm going to listen to you instead. And it's not yeah. the, like if she then said German shepherds, that is, I'd be like, okay. And I go back to my business. But until I got my answers, I'm yeah. in to figure out who the Germans are that live in this woman's home. Yeah. I mean, she did say a golden. She didn't mention dogs. I don't know. You know, I imagine it's a golden retriever, but who knows? Right? Yeah. <laughs> who knows what know. they were actually talking about? And uh, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty normal week. We should probably say right now that... We have an announcement, a, a minor announcement. It's not a real announcement yet. Oh. We're trying to finalize that. We're trying to finalize the date. Yeah. Uh, but potentially, August nineteenth, Chicago, Illinois. Oh. We would love to see you for a live show. Oh. We're gonna absolutely try our best to <laughs> make it that day. The last time I looked, they were trying to lock it in. It's not confirmed though, so don't get crazy. Just like think. Plan ahead. Just mentally say August. Cox and Crendor. Yeah. Coxgust. Crendogust. I don't know about that. Crendogust is pretty close. That's <laughs> the best. Crendogust. Coxgust yeah. sucks. <laughs> Coxes. Coxes. Uh, that's also a Saturday. It is. So. I, I, I said I would love to do a Saturday show because we keep getting put on like a Thursday or a Sunday. Yeah, I'm like, it's a lot I'd of love people to do a that Saturday. are like, there's a lot of people who are like, I love to go, but like, then they got to go to work the next day, so they can't do it. But at least on a Saturday, then they can like go home Sunday if they got it. Yeah. I mean, and we do a great job selling tickets. So here's what I'll say. If we do land this Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably sell out faster. So just heads up. That is true. You don't want to buy them sooner rather than later. So wait for our announcement. We'll do it here on the show, but. Just mentally plan. Yeah, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, plan it out. spiritually. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what else you should plan on doing? Ooh, oh, ho. plan on getting yourself ExpressVPN. Because if you spend time online, even if you're the safest, I promise you, people know what you've been up to. And now you're probably thinking, well, why don't I just go incognito mode? And here's the thing. It may not give you all the cookies or the whatever and, and remember everywhere you've been, but your ISP, your internet service provider, they know, they track all of it, even if you are using incognito mode. That's why we use ExpressVPN. ISPs in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. It's just a fact. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure server so your ISP can't see what you're doing. ExpressVPN also keeps all your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, I don't even realize it's on. To be honest, it just runs in the background. It does its thing. One tap buttons for all the different things going on in it. ExpressVPN is available for all your devices as well. Phones, computers, smart TV, and there's a whole bunch of other additive awesome stuff when using a VPN that just go look it up yourself. Do your research. But I will simply say, since I started using ExpressVPN, the frequency of me having to deal with all the things that 
having your name out there, right, equals, sure, it seems great that everyone knows me as Jesse Cox. There's also bad actors who use my email to sign me up for weird <laughs> spam things or try to get my bank account information or try to discover, you know, passwords and things. And ExpressVPN has honestly saved me from having to deal with that stress because it used to be one of those things where I get a message all the time that's like, information from this website's on the dark web. You got to change your password again. Now everything is encrypted and so much safer, and I'm just so thankful I don't have to memorize 85 passwords anymore. If you want to give it a shot right now, protect yourself online today with a VPN rated number one by Business Insider with the exclusive Cox and Crendor code at expressvpn.com slash Cox, C-O-X. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Cox to get an extra three months free on a one-year package. ExpressVPN.com slash Cox. All right, Grendel, let's go to Jumping Jackson. The guys of Grendel, how's that driving out there? Whoa. Um, oh, boy. Uh, we are in the sky flying high, and it looks like there's some traffic out there right now, although it's actually not too bad. Spring break's over. Uh, it's not summer yet, so it's actually uh, pretty standard traffic. Nothing too crazy. Weather's not too bad. So, uh, enjoy it. Come back, dude. Thanks, Crendor. Now let's go to weather. <laughs> weather. <laughs> she she <laughs> drove off on like a motorcycle, like a Kawasaki. I don't know what the hell <laughs> Motorcycle. Going on. Sometimes you just gotta rev up into the weather, you know? That's how I am sometimes when it's cold outside and I have to like step out the door. I gotta yeah. rev myself up. <laughs> um all right, let's see. Weather for uh I just typed in weather and then I hit enter a bunch of times to cycle through other requests and I have landed on uh can we get a weather report for Thorn Torun Poland? Home to Copernicus and a gingerbread powerhouse on European scale. It is one of the few medieval Polish towns that avoided destruction during the war, but the life here will never be as good as when the Teutonic Knights ruled the place. <laughs> what the hell? Hold on, what is this place? Torun, Poland. Wait, there's Torun, Kuyavian, Pomeranian, Vovoidership, Poland, and Torun, Lublin, Vovoidership. I'm just clicking the top one. It's, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. It is 54 American degrees, mostly cloudy, 64 at night, low 46, rain possible after 10 a.m. Uh, let's see, we got the hives, where I said that, humidity 88%, pressure 29.71 inches, 10 miles of visibility, a 528 a.m. sunrise and 8 p.m. sunset, only 3 mile an hour winds. 51 on the dew point, zero on the UV index, and a moon phase of waxing crescent for the 10 day. We've got uh, cloudy, occasional rain on Monday, high of 64, chance of rain 80%. Tuesday, 53 and cloudy. Wednesday, 51, mostly cloudy. Thursday, 53, cloudy. Friday, 58, cloudy. Saturday, 60, mostly cloudy. Sunday, 59, cloudy. Monday, 59, partly cloudy. It's like the same weather as over here. I am officially obsessed with the living museum of gingerbread <laughs> <laughs> they have a it's called the living museum of gingerbread and it is a place where you can go uh learn how they make gingerbread but like medieval style oh okay. and the commercial they have for it i'm gonna let you know i don't know who these two women are but it's like two ladies dressed up in I don't know, 15th century outfits, and I've never been more attracted. I, it might be the gingerbread. It's like 90% of it, but I've never been more attracted to anyone in my life, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at this gingerbread, bro. <laughs> it looks so delicious. I want to oh, just wow. go. Hey, look at that. The photos of this place look so cool. It looks, it looks like a place where you could take your kids and really have a good-ass time. And by kids, yeah. I mean me and then I make and eat all the gingerbread cookies. <laughs> yeah, that does <laughs> that does sound something like you would do. Probably you'd probably have like a couple alcoholic beverages. Oh, oh yeah, I go out and get like sausage and, and booze beforehand. Maybe like a <laughs> pierogi. 
right? Yeah. And then right. go there, you know, nothing like loading up on <laughs> potatoes and then, and then <laughs> heading to get gingerbread cookies. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds fantastic. I love this. Yo, that's this gingerbread, this ginger. They have gingerbread city guard. What? <laughs> what? Oh, no, that's just a terrible headline. A gingerbread city guards its secrets. I thought they had uh, guards, like gingerbread guards. I was like, whoa! I mean, they still might. Maybe that's the secret. <laughs> the secret, the gingerbread guard secret is they have gingerbread guards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never would expect it. <laughs> um, wait, isn't there like a big Teutonic Knight castle in Poland? Is that where this is? Maybe that's what they were saying, that this was the... Teutonic Castle Ruins. Oh, yeah, I think that is it. Here, hold on. Look at this. Teutonic Castle Ruins. Yo, that is old. Like, that's that old, is old. old. <laughs> yeah. It is basically a wall. <laughs> Here, yeah, <it's... laughs> There's some uh, interesting masks. One of the masks looks like a, what I imagine... When we played Goblins D and D, it's like, do you see this guy? <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> Literally looks like a goblin. Like it yeah. looks like Crendor's character from the game we played. <laughs> God, That's it's so, so crazy. Funny to, like look at these places, and you're like, "Hey, look at this old ass thing," and just realize like that used to just be where people live. Yeah, it's uh, it's always strange to look at ruins and be like, a thousand years ago, some dude was like, "This is my home." And now it is crumbling rocks. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. I mean, I guess that in a thousand years from now, that'll be most of our stuff too. That's true. It could be the I, world. My apartment won't be my apartment won't be around in fifty years. Going <laughs> LA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, honestly, the worst part about the medieval ages, like you couldn't even if you had a headache, can't even take like Advil or something. Oh, they just give you leeches. Yeah, leeches for headaches. Yeah, suck out the blood. Is that like an actual thing? I'm sure well, I know it leeches is. for sucking out blood is, but I don't know about headaches. Yeah, to like relieve the pressure. I'm sure they did that. I leeches <laughs> for headaches? Dude, I'm telling you this is a thing. The leech <laughs> creates a strong reflex action that acts as a muscle relaxant without causing damage to ligaments, tendons, or paraspinal muscles. Yes, they would definitely do it. Migraine leeches, they're called. Stop. What the shit? No, oh, yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. I don't need that. <laughs> I thought we were going to find something that was like 500 years ago. This is the thing they do. I'm literally looking at Arizona leech therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course it's oh, Arizona. Okay, cool, cool. We still doing that. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is. Yeah, look at this. This lady. Literally, yeah, 2022. I had chronic migraines for five years. Then I discovered a cure. Leeches. <laughs> Dude, that's... I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I looked up leeches online and read that hirudotherapy dated back to 400 BC. And while leeches were used for centuries as treatment for a variety of ailments, the practice had fallen out of favor in the early 17th century. Well, why did it fall out of favor? Is it just because they ran out of leeches? Just because sticking leeches to your body is, like, weird and creepy. I don't know. I mean, but it also is. it could be due to religious reasons, right? Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Where, there, where someone was like, it is sucking the blood, the Lord's blood. You know how that shit is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, listen, okay, listen to this. So she says, this is, this is the experience, all right? Irina pulled up my sweater and placed five leeches on my torso in line with important organs like my liver and kidneys. There will be a little pain, she warned, holding the first leech up in the air. Just when they bite down, she looked over at me to see how I was taking all this. I waved her away. Ha! This is nothing, I said. I lay there obediently for 30 minutes. The slight pain of the leeches commencing their work was akin to what I felt in the hospital when my newborn son learned to latch onto my breast. When Irina came back into the treatment room, she was carrying a box of cling wrap and a bag of Kotex pads. I eyed her suspiciously. I would too. Time to wrap you up, my darling, she chirped. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be so out of there. And proceeded to take each sucking, clinging leech off me. 
Blood started to flow from all the puncture holes. She swiftly arranged several pads to absorb the spurting blood, then wrapped the cling wrap around me several times, very snugly to keep the pads in place. I pulled my sweater on and practiced breathing in my post-leech corset. I left Irina armed with more Kotex to change the dressings and instructions to text her pictures of the bloody pads when I changed them. Just that's like too some much. <laughs> that's like some weird like back alley treatment. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like do we have like bandages? Like, no, we got cling wrap. I'll wrap you. Up. <laughs> oh, okay. We have like gauze or something. Do you have like, you know, alcohol to like sanitize? No, we got cling wrap. Kotex pads. Oh. It's just too much. Plus, like, do the leeches, do they, like, get dirty or, like, do they clean themselves? How do they even work? I, uh, how do leeches work is, <laughs> is a question I never thought I would ever have to think about. Ever. How do leeches work? Yeah, because, like, <laughs> what if they're using these leeches for, like, a bunch of people and somebody, you know, like, it's blood. Are you like tra like do the bleaches got like leftover blood from their well, last? Well, I imagine leeches would get full, right? Right. So they wouldn't use the same ones right away. I don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, bro. I don't know. <laughs> Plus, like uh, maybe if this was like a like a an approved medical establishment, I'd be like, all right, they know what they're doing. But this lady, I don't, I don't know if I trust this. Just Irina in Arizona. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, so if anybody knows, if there's any leech experts out there, uh, please let us know. Wait, okay, how did... Uh, now I need to see how she even discovered this. She says, I thought I had tried everything in the last five years. When Tatiana, a mother at my daughter's elementary school, advised me to try leech therapy, the tall, striking woman confided that she routinely used the therapy for cosmetic purposes. Wait, what? Would it be something like, um, what is that stupid thing? Botox, maybe? Maybe. I don't, <laughs> that's all I can think of. I got, like, uh, I have any clue. Yeah. I don't know. It was, oh, and this is, this is all happening from the treatment room, which was on the bottom level of her townhouse. <laughs> so this is just literally in some woman's home. That all this is happening. That is, yeah. That is, well, I don't doubt that it works, but uh, <laughs> I don't think I do. Granted, migraines do suck, so maybe you get desperate. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, I have to believe all. that. Yeah, it's a it's a desperation thing where you're like, I'll try anything, and I guess it works for some people. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like there's an ick factor for me where I'd be like, you know, asking again the same questions you are. How do leeches work? I'd be like, yeah. hold on, what's the like? What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. How do leeches work? Somebody answer our question. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the weather. All right, let's go to sports. Sports. Oh, boy. Welcome to the sports desk. We've got a lot of sports happening. Um, currently, in the NBA playoffs, we've got the Heat up two games to one on the Bucks. we got the Celtics going up 3-1 on the Hawks. We got the 76ers sweeping the Nets. We got the Knicks beating the Cavaliers 3-1. They just need one more. Uh, Timberwolves currently down 3-0 to the Nuggets. That game four is going on right now. Nuggets might sweep them. Uh, Lakers up 2-1 on the Grizzlies. The Kings and Warriors are tied at two games apiece. We got the Suns up 3-1 on the Clippers. And I believe those are all the NBA games. Then in hockey... We also got playoffs going on. We got uh, the Kings and the Edmonton Oilers battling it out. And currently, that is L.A. leading the series 2-1. to one. Uh, And they're up 3 nothing over the Oilers right now. Mamma mia. Uh, you got the Hurricane up 3-1 on the Islanders. You got the Bruins up 3-1 on the Panthers. You got the Stars wild tied at two games apiece. And... Uh, where are we next games? Then we got the, wait, Monday. There you are. Then we have the Rangers up 2-1 on the Devils. We got the Maple Leafs up 2-1 on the Lightning. Golden Knights up 2-1 on the Jets. And the Avalanche up 2-1 on the Kraken. Uh, then over in baseball, we've got the Tampa Bay Rays at 19-3. and Woo, and right behind them is the Baltimore Orioles at 14-7. and Surprisingly, 
the last place teams over there, the Yankees and the Red Sox. That's kind of fun. That I mean, uh, that is a reversal <laughs> of fortunes, yeah. That is a reversal. I like it. Uh, we got the Twins atop the Central, the Texas Rangers atop the West, uh, the Braves and the Mets battling out in the East, the Pirates and the Brewers atop the Central with the Cubs close behind, and the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers and the Padres all battling out in the West. Uh, also, the Colorado Rockies mascot was attacked while dancing on the dugout. <laughs> well, of course. He is well, a of course. purple dinosaur named Dinger. And a drunk man climbed up and tried to tackle him and did. And then Dinger got up and was like, get off of me. And then they got that guy out of there. <laughs> 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 Don't mess with Dinger, dude. All right. Don't do it. Don't mess with him. He's just a dinosaur and his team's in last place. All right. <laughs> let him let him dance. And that's sports. Oh, uh, OK. What is our fact of the day? We've got the Australian government banned the word mate for a day. Sorry, what? The Australian government banned the word mate for so a no day. So no one could be like, good day, mate. Exactly. <laughs> good But, but uh, oh, oh, why? <laughs> what was the reasoning? That's a good question. There are probably slang or informal words that get on your nerves from time to time, particularly when you think about something that should be taken seriously. In 2005, Australian Parliament took a few citizens' complaints a little too seriously and banned anyone on their staff from using the word mate while at work. Fortunately, Prime Minister John Howard objected, claiming that mate was an important part of Australian culture and the ban was overturned within 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would agree with that. It, I feel like it's an important part of the culture. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the main things I think of when I think of Australia. Right? That and, uh, you know, I don't know, drop bears. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. Uh, and the the emu wars. Oh, yeah, you gotta... The emu wars are a staple. Yeah, I mean, other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I don't know anything else about Australia. I've been there three <laughs> and, times, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, Steve Irwin. Uh, here's another fact, just because it randomly was what right below it. That isn't really surprising, but I guess it kind of is, but it's not. Apple pie isn't actually American. Well, no shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most food isn't American. It was brought over with us. Well, it, but they always go like, it's American as apple pie. Right? That's because in America, we love apple pie. I mean, that's true, but. Like hot dogs <laughs> aren't American, yet it's the American like thing, right? I guess really everything here isn't truly American, right? Yeah, it's all I, like <laughs> from somewhere else. The most Americanized stuff is still like when you think of like Southern cuisine, right? Mm -hmm. Like good Southern food that still is from somewhere else, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it was perfected and changed and crafted. Like if you're in Louisiana and you're having Creole, that is a combination of other cuisines put together, right? Yeah. So it's not, you know, nothing is truly American except for maybe corn. Yeah. That's pretty American. That's American as <laughs> shit. That's true. That is. But other than um, that, like, I don't know. Apples originally come from Asia. The first yep. pies were baked in medieval Europe. Even yep. the concept of putting apples in pie traces back to a recipe from England in 1381. Uh, nevertheless, the phrase is American as apple pie turned up by 1924 and became a common saying during the years of the Second World War. I believe that. That's when we were kind of riding high on our own ego. That's true. And then we were I can like, just picture that in like a, an ad like, as American as apple pie. <laughs> we also just named foods or places without really think. Like <laughs> French fries are not from France, but they had them in yeah. France for the first time. So it became French fries. Like I don't. Like we don't. We clearly don't care about other people's <laughs> cultures. So, yeah, that's it's true. ours now. <laughs> <laughs> um. So those are facts of the day. Can you imagine being the first guy to make an apple pie in the 1300s? Just like so, I put the apples <laughs> in the pan and I bake. Is good, no? <laughs> and everyone's like, no. I wonder if they were thrilled. I thought the dude was like a wizard. You know what I mean? They probably did, yeah. Actually, when was the first pie ever made? I'm sure the first pie was a meat pie. 
Absolutely. Probably it had to have been, yeah. Probably pre ancient Rome, I would say. To take uh, like uh, unleavened bread of some sort and stick meat in it and then like bake it off. I'm sure that happened all the time. Uh let's see. The history of pie. Um uh, Roman pies. Wait, the origin of pie date back to the early Egyptian culture. Their pie had a honey filling encased in a crusty cake bake made or cake made from barley, oats, rye, or wheat. One Egyptian tablet created before 2000 BC provided a recipe for chicken pie. Both sound delicious. It shows the nation like both sweet and savory pies. The ancient Greeks got in on the pie business around the 5th century BC. The pie pastry is mentioned in the plays of Aristophanes and Heaven suggests there was a vocation of pastry chef totally separate from a baker. The pie that we know as a top and bottom crust pie was mm. probably developed in the second century BC. Ah, okay. Uh, the recipe is in De Agricultura by Marcus Porcius Cato, Cato the Elder, and maybe the earliest recipes for a closed pie. So there's other oh. pies, but the first like pie that we know with a top bottom crust would be then, I guess. Yeah, that's Damn. pretty cool. I like look at that. Yeah, that's uh, neat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Wait, was that was that sports or was that? No, a, no that was our fact, fact of the day. Of the day. <laughs> that's your fact of the day. All <laughs> right, let's go to our big news story. So there wasn't any crazy news I saw, so I went to Cosmopolitan. Oh, lovely. We're back here again, eh? And here's numerous articles. Let me know if any of these interest you. All right. Hit me. All right. The top things are currently cheers to these 20 cheap drinks that are ridiculously easy to make at home. Nope. Sucks. <laughs> it's official. You like hard seltzer now. Nope. Sucks. <laughs> uh, 22 amazing houses for bachelorette party weekend. Nope. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we got, uh, let's see here. What's the deal with TikTok's viral knee thing? Nope, I don't even <laughs> want to know. I don't want to know what it is. <laughs> the, the the Dom Sub Dynamic Defined. Mind you. The, the this, Dom Sub? No, no, I'm all right. Mind you, this <laughs> article literally has this as the picture for it. <laughs> for people who are curious, it's a man licking a woman's boots. That's the image. <laughs> Yeah, And then on one of the boots, <laughs> just to clarify, it says Dom. <laughs> just in case you didn't know. Just in case you didn't understand, yeah. 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 Um, we have, uh, women are statistically less likely to swipe right on dudes with cats. I don't know. Is right good or bad? I don't know. Moving on. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we have, uh, Mike Kink. Boning in the bathroom at fancy restaurants, obviously. The obviously part eh, is what upsets me. <laughs> that does upset me, too. Yeah, if I would be interested until the comma, obviously. Like, nah, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> obviously. Like, what? How is that obvious? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> cool. Um, Let's see. We've got... uh. Apartment essentials, nah, don't care. Dude, this website sucks. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I feel like it's not for us, dude. I feel like, I don't know, something no about way. it. Yeah. <laughs> Low-key smart ways to get out of working today. Okay, I'm kind of interested yeah, in this one. Yeah, all right, let's hear let's about low-key smart ways. Yeah, here we go. Getting out of your super cozy bed and going to work is never easy. Between contemplating life's purpose to mindlessly scrolling TikTok with one eye shut because it just refuses to open, why would you ever want to leave? Even if you love your job more than anything, you'd probably still choose your sweet, sweet relaxation over back-to-back -back Zoom You could have wrote meetings. probably. You could have. It's, it, it's an <laughs> article. You could have wrote pro. It's not a tweet. You don't have to yeah, say it, letters. <laughs> this is, this is a problem. <laughs> Probs. <laughs> Probs. If you're down to tell a small white lie believable enough to get you a little weekday chill day, I've got you covered. So wait. Oh. So they're they're just gonna give us lies. So, yeah, so what you're saying is the best ways to get out of work is to lie about people have been doing that forever. This isn't a hot new scoop. What are you telling <laughs> me? The best way to get out of work lie about it. <laughs> 
Like, no shit! This is... <laughs> oh my god. So there's like a bunch of... I just scrolled down. This is the one I saw at the bottom, okay? When I scrolled down. I stubbed my toe really badly. Uh... <laughs> what? These are the worst. If I ever got a call from an employee that said I stubbed my toe really badly, I'd be like, all right, well then, you know, don't sit on it for like 20 minutes, then come in. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, you know, lift your leg up, put some ice on it, and then come in. A stubbed toe? Get out of time. Like, you'll buy yourself 20 minutes max with me. I'm not, I'm not playing that game. They got, my cat is having kittens. And somebody said, I skipped work because my boyfriend surprised me with tickets to see Beyonce and Jay-Z. I ended up telling my boss my cat was having kittens and I needed to be there for emotional support. Uh, would the boss not be like, yo, can I like see the kittens? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I guess the one of those things is like if they say that, then you can say, you don't believe me. You know, and then you then like they take it to the next level and they freak out and then. The boss is the bad guy. I think like that's what they're trying to go for. I guess. Yeah. But then at that point, you're like, this person's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, what are these? My bathtub fell through the ceiling. I decided to take a girl's trip to Vegas for my bachelorette party and told my boss that my bathtub fell through my ceiling and I would be out for three days because of the repairs, and he totally bought it. <laughs> Got him. Got him. <laughs> Now these also uh. these are like so I thought this was gonna be like creative things like say you're hanging out with the president. You know what I mean? Like just some like random cool shit. This is just like say you stubbed your toe and you have kittens. That's a double whammy. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. Somebody said I texted my boss that I had to have an emergency root canal the day before and I wasn't allowed to talk for two days. It worked. Okay, so you did that. Maybe this article should be Things that you've done when you realize you don't like your job and you should move on. <laughs> that, that, that should be the title of this. It should yeah. be like top 10 signs your job is not for you. You faked to stubbing your toe. You told your boss you had a root canal. You had kittens. Like all those things are just a sign that you hate your job. Yeah, like just like literally this is <laughs> plus. Okay, a root canal. I'd be like, yeah, I mean, I literally had a root canal. I was fine. Like, <laughs> it's not like you had, like, jaw surgery. Like, what? Yeah. It's not like know. you're coming into work to, like, kiss people. It's fine. <laughs> you're, you're all right. Unless you work at the kissing factory, in which case. That's true. Where is that? How do I get a job there? <laughs> I'd leave YouTube in a heartbeat. <laughs> Where'd Jesse go? Oh, here he works at the kissing factory now. <laughs> oh, that's good, good for him. Like what is okay, what what's another thing? They also have how to brag about your life without being a jerk. <laughs> so <laughs> what <laughs> how do you do that? We're in a time that is uniquely hard, scary, and dire. A lot of my clients or friends come to me worried that talking about their wins amid so much death and economic hardship is tacky as hell. <laughs> this what? is the, this is the same thing huh? that when you see people who constantly talk about how like hard financial times are and things like that, and then they buy something insane, right? Like this is, <laughs> yeah. you see it all the time in the YouTube space yeah. where like YouTubers will be like, yeah, it's so hard out there. And I, and then they'll buy something cr like, guys, look at this new thing I just bought. It's like two videos ago, <laughs> yeah. you were talking about how you had no money. Well, where'd that yeah. come from? Yeah. Oh, and yeah, uh, yeah. 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 They're like, yeah, guys, it's rough out there. And then they're like at Coachella or like at a concert, like front row seats, <laughs> right? <laughs> what? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you're just like, come on now. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff to put it literally as nice as possible sucks right now. Like they keep saying that, but like, sure, it can suck. But like, we're not living in like the medieval times. Like a you're not of, living dude, in the a lot of stuff Knights sucks Castle. right now, man. <laughs> Like, stuff always sucked. In fact, back then, <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> you'd probably worry you get assassinated by the rival kingdom or something. You know? Yeah. Now you now like, stuff sucks in a different way. But stuff always sucks. Yeah. Back then, you get, like, something wrong with you. Like, you do surgery. They're like, nah. <laughs> you're dead. I, <laughs> I've never understood bragging about, like, buying things. It's always seemed weird to me. Mm -hmm. Like I spent a ridiculous sum of money on this thing. Look at me, like cool, I guess. 
Like, congrats? Yeah. Like, it always seemed weird to me. Is this... Okay. They said, I've learned that flexing can make people feel uncomfortable. Thing is, once they understand that sharing their work matters and leads to being rewarded for their efforts, it gets a lot less awkward. Let me break this down a bit. We all know someone at work or in life who gets more praise money or opportunity while doing less. And that might be because they're just better at communicating their wins. <laughs> Bragging. All those dudes that who make those videos, they're like... These are my 12 cars. <laughs> oh, yeah. People buy into that shit so easily, and you're like, oh, That's true. all right. I guess, I guess, yeah. I guess stupid breeds stupid. Who knew? People buy into a lot of stuff that I'm like, this is super fake, like, all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially on YouTube or TikTok or any of those places, like, right away, I'm like, oh, this is fake. And there's people being like, I can't believe that they do. Like, I'm like, I... Am I, are these people as gullible? Are they like 15? Are they both? Are they like, like, I don't know. It's just maybe because we're like doing this all the time. It just is obvious, but I don't know. Honestly, I have no clue. I don't I. You would think it's obvious just in general, but pff, I don't know, man. <laughs> then it says, first, know that your voice is worthy. Okay. I mean, sure. You can, you know. Being like, hey, this is my opinion on something and tell it to people like, OK, as long as you're not being like, yeah, I'm kind of cool. <laughs> and then it says, accept that bragging is just part of being good at what you do. This is this is like an article written by a bragger to make <laughs> themselves feel better about bragging. <laughs> this is because like there's there's no if you are successful and you constantly brag about how successful you are. That rubs everyone the wrong way, and it should, because you're bragging, and you yeah. learned as a child, nobody likes bragging. Yeah, like, there, <laughs> there's a reason. It's not, like, it's not that hard to figure out. Just, yeah. no one likes when you rub success in their face, right? It's just yeah. a courtesy thing. Like, you can be proud of your wins, awesome, good on you, but... To rub it in someone else's face when you don't know their situation, and if they're going through a rough time, you made that worse for them. Yeah. <laughs> and I know people are going to be like, well, it's not about them. I'm focusing on me. You can also do that without bragging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but like they say here, bragging not only shows the good work you're doing, but it also inspires others to work better. That is not true. Because bragging is saying something in a boastful manner, according to the dictionary. Right? So, like, if you're saying something in a boastful manner, like, oh, man, that was the easiest thing I've ever done. Most people would be like, this guy, this person's a dick. <laughs> right? That's not going to be like, wow, I want to be like them. <laughs> like, it would be like that. And, but there is this kind of weird thing where sometimes people, when they brag about their success, people tune in to see their bragging, right? But mm -hmm. I would love to know the longevity of that kind of thing. Because after a while, people tune in. It's just like when people tune in for shock. After a while, yeah. eh, kind of over it. Like, eh, you know, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and then they just say, make it a priority to show the good stuff you've done. Like, okay, that's normal. You don't have to brag about it. You just be like, hey, I did some cool stuff. And people be yeah, like, yo, yeah. that's pretty sick, dude. And be like, nice. And then you move on. <laughs> I feel like maybe because we have it happen more often than most people. We're just so That's over true, it yeah. because most conversations you have with YouTube people or industry people or really anyone in LA, for example, is <laughs> yeah. they, someone always drops a number or drops an amount of money or drops a like follower count or drops some weird success thing or the person they just hung out with. That's important. Yeah. And it always <laughs> happens. You're just like, yo, we're just friends. You don't need to do that. <laughs> like, we're, just, we're hanging out. You don't need to do all that. <laughs> yeah that is yeah that's very true that's a very common thing mm. in this industry <laughs> yeah it's just it's like upsetting. what's your sub count viewer count how many people watch you what's your thing who do you know it's just like uh <laughs> okay and it sucks because it absolutely you're being judged on it right like yeah certain levels of success do not associate with other levels like if you're in the top 0.1 percent you associate with the other top one percent people right and if you're yeah. not in that top 0.1%, you could be in the top 1%. And you're still not good enough, right? Yeah. Like they, 
we've had experience. People just ditch you to go like hang with the more important people because now they're in your friend group because that's how millionaires are. And you're like, oh my God, you're the worst. <laughs> yeah. It happens and it sucks. Yeah. The, the moral of the story here is that this article is dumb and Cosmo is dumb. Agreed. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, right. Well, that is it for us. Thanks so much for listening or watching or have enjoyed this podcast. Crendor, hit him with the socials. Oh, boy. We've got socials. You can listen to all the podcasts over here on YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast, all one word. Uh, in fact, I just recently went through all of our podcasts and they introduced the podcast playlist feature. And so now if you go to our channel page and you scroll down a bit, you'll see that all of the podcasts are organized by year. So you can listen to all the 2023 episodes, 2022 episodes, 2021 episodes, etc. I mean, all of it, I'm sure, very worth it. Very <laughs> worth it. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's an option if you want yeah. to. <laughs> it's an option. It's an option. Uh, you can also go to YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor. That's where all the animations are. That's where the, the funny bits get animated by Dan. Wow. Um, also... We're on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, all those places. Then we got our main stuff. We got Patreon.com slash Jesse Cox, Patreon.com slash Crendor, YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox, YouTube.com slash Crendor, Twitch TV Jesse Cox, Twitch TV Crendor, Facebook Jesse Cox, Facebook Crendor, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikTok, TikTok Crendor, Twitter Jesse Cox, Twitter Crendor, the Warhammer Crendor, uh, Cox Clips on YouTube, Cren Clips on YouTube, uh, Instagram Notorious Cox, Instagram Crendor is taken. I, I, you had like a breakdown there at the end, but I'm here for it. Break, 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 break down. Okay. Well, that's it. We'll see y'all next time. And as always, we'll be continued.